Hey everybody, thanks for joining us online again today. We are so excited that you have chosen to join us here at Snohomish Student Ministries Online. Uh, this is a new week. Uh, as last week, Brian finished uh, the last part of James chapter 5. So we went through the whole book of James uh, during our pandemic time. It was a great time that we were able to just to look into the wisdom that James has and, and how we should live as Christians in today's world. So for the next two weeks, we're actually going to be starting a new series. And the reason I say only two weeks is because we are soon starting our midweek services where we will be able to meet together in person as a student ministry. Starting on October 7th at 6.30 p.m. in the main worship auditorium, we are going to have student services. This is a great time for you to bring your friends, get them uh, acclimated to what we do here at Snohomish Student Ministries. It's a great time for you to come back and reconnect. Uh, we are still under COVID guidelines for social distancing and mask wearing but we will be able to get together as a student ministries. Brian and Emily and I and all of your leaders are so stoked to be able to do that. So that being said, we're going to start a new series on October 7th. So we've got two weeks where we're going to talk a little bit about the church. As Pastor Fred has been talking about the church as well, we're going to take a look at just two small aspects of what the church is. And uh, I'm going to start off this week by, by saying, what is the church? Um, and we're going to delve into a little bit to understand what the church is and that the church belongs to Christ. So uh, before we get started, if you just want to bow your heads with me and we'll pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything you do for us, Lord. We thank you for protecting us during this time of pandemic and uh, uh, insecurity and just not knowing what's going on, Lord. We ask that that continues, Lord. Let us be a light in our world uh, through Zoom or through school or work or whatever it is that we have, we have in front of us. Lord, we ask that you guide us. We ask that you allow us to understand your purpose for the church uh, in these two short weeks. And Lord, we just, uh, we're praying for uh, our new service to starting up. We just thank you for that opportunity as well. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Uh, so like I said, we're going to start uh, by just kind of understanding uh, what the church is. So uh, the first question is, what is the church? Uh, if you were to ask many people outside, you say, what's a church? And they're like, well, it's a building where people come and, and they worship their God or gods or whatever it may be. Uh, it's a really common thing. In fact, most of the time I can guess that if someone asked you, what church do you go to or where do you go to church? You would say Snohomish Community Church. It's in Snohomish, Washington. Well, that may be true. That, that is not actually the, what the church is. The church is not a building. While we come to gather here in this building, that is not the church. The church, the word for church, actually comes from the Greek word ekklesia, which means to be a chosen one or an assembly or a called out ones. So automatically we see that the word church means we should be separate or called out from the general public. We are not just the general public. It describes the church so well because... The church actually is those who have accepted Christ as their Savior. The ones who have been called by the Holy Spirit and His love and God's love and Jesus' sacrifice to accept His salvation and repent from our sins. That is what we are being called out to. Now, we can, we can take it a couple different ways. The Bible actually mentions or, or describes the church in a couple different ways, two to be exact. The first being the universal church and the second being the local church. Now, the universal church is just that. It's all believers everywhere. It doesn't matter if they live in a different country or whatever it is. Those who believe and have accepted Christ as their Savior, they are, we are all part of the universal church. Uh, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, it says, And he put all things together under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fulfills all in all. So the universal church 
is not just the believers, but the believers with Christ as the head. We can then break it down into the local church. Uh, the, the, the local church is, is just that. It's local. It's believers in a general area or um, gathering together. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a building. Uh, it doesn't have to be um, in, in, a, uh, in an established Snohomish Community Church. Now, that's the way we do it today, and we want you to be part of your local church. But if we look back in history, the early church was done mainly in homes. It wasn't a church building. Uh, they didn't have to go to the synagogue in order to learn or to, um, to, to do that, whereas the Jewish tradition did. It gave a lot more freedom because they weren't confined like Jews were to the law. We weren't confined to a building. Uh, now, I'm not saying don't come to a building. In fact, that's where we, this is the spot where we determine, hey, this is where we can gather together, fellowship and worship together. That local church is so important because you can't connect universally with all Christians. It's just, uh, we have technology available to us at all, but we, we just can't connect with all of them. We're, it's too much, too far. Some people don't have that technology ability. Whereas we do here in our church, uh, we're so blessed to be able to meet online even like this, but gather together uh, is, is what the local church was meant for. Now, now that we know what the church is, I, I think one of the most important aspects of church, of, of being the church, uh, sometimes we, we don't always put it at the forefront. Um, and that being that the church belongs to Christ. We are Christ's bride. We are what he does things for, why he died for us in the first place. And that's what we want to take a look at a little bit more in depth today. I don't want to skip over something before though, because it's important, especially when we're establishing that Christ is the head, is going back to Ephesians 1, that, that we are put under Christ as the body of Christ. What's even, that's what it's called. We are part of his body with, with him at the head. Uh, exploring that a little bit further, we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 16. Uh, we're going to focus really on one part of one verse, but I want to read a passage for you so you kind of get the context of what's going on. We're going to start in uh, chapter or verse 13 of Matthew chapter 16. It says, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There's a lot going on there with Jesus asking his disciples what the world views him as. What the world sees Jesus as. And uh, many of them said, well, he's a prophet. Uh, you know, Jeremiah maybe. Could be John the Baptist. You know, uh, someone coming forth before the Lamb of God, uh, but the, none of them were quite right. And then he said, okay, so that's what people say, but what do you say? Who do you, my disciples, who I've been teaching and who have been going with me, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter, ah, uh, this is so great. He says it so clearly and cleanly. He says, you are the Christ or you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. It's so incredible because at, up to this point, Jesus hadn't said those words in particular. He said, God revealed, God the Father, my Father revealed that to you. So clear and clean that God, he was the son of the living God, that he is the Messiah. And then he returns to Peter and says, you are Peter and on this rock, 
I will build my church. And that's the focus, that's the sentence, the phrase I want to focus on is those five words in verse 18 that says, I will build my church. It's important that we, that we look at it, and, and I'm just going to take you through, and we're going to break it down, uh, each part of that sentence, uh, to understand just how much and how important Christ is to us as the church. Uh, the first word of that sentence is, is just one letter, but it holds so much. The first word is I, when we say, I will build my church, I Now, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. He's saying, I will build my church. It's important because he's saying emphatically, I. Anytime Jesus said, I am, or I do this, or or, I will, it's important to perk up, to pay attention. Because this is the son of the living God, the Christ, who is speaking directly to, at this point, his disciples, but to us, saying, I, me, the head of, of the church, the head of, of, of uh, believers, the, the, the son of the living God, not only do I have the authority to say I will build the church, but I have the ability. He's saying that I am not just man, but I am God as well. Whereas man, none of us have the ability to lead the church. None of us are sinless. None of us are blameless. But Christ is declaring right there, I, me, I have the authority and the ability, will build my church. It's super important that we don't forget that Jesus is the head. And he says it, that first part, I will do it. The second word to focus is will, right? I will build my church. And it's important for us to understand what will means here. It Will means, as a verb, its definition is is expressing inevitable events. He's saying, in the future, I will. It's going to happen. It's not, I might, or I'm working on it, or whatever. The Lord God, the Son of God, man and God put together says, will. He is saying, inevitable. It's going to happen. It's a certainty. You can't get away from it. The church will be built and I will be building it. It's so fascinating that he he uses that, that he is going to do it. And he says, no force, whether physical or spiritual, is able to stop him. It, you, you can't do it. It says, will happen. It's not, I might unless they do this or unless this happens. He says, it will be done. Even in the second part of of, uh, verse 18 says, even the gates of hell cannot stop him from building his church. That's how much of a certainty it is. He will build the church. Uh, The next part is is a really... uh, Again, he's cementing that the church is his, is the fourth word in that sentence. It says, I will build my church. Not I will build the church or I will build a church, but very specifically his church. We mentioned in Ephesians that he's the head of the church. It goes on to say in Acts 20 verse 28 says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he, look here, obtained with his own blood. Without the sacrifice of Christ, there is no church. There's no believers. There's no followers. Without the sacrifice that he made and the resurrection that he had for us to believe that he's given that to us, there is no church. And because he paid for it with his own blood, he is saying, you are mine. This is my church. And anything that is not the head, if you put anything else at the beginning of it, you are not of my church. You are not putting your focus in the right spot. Uh, He... As with that ownership um, that he has, we are precious to him. 
We are important, so he will protect us and he will keep us. It says in John chapter 10, verse 28, I gave them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. He makes it so important that it's his church, that he will protect us and that he is holding fast the son of God with the power to be able to not only build the church, but to hold it. And the last part is, the final word of the phrase is, is church. It says, I will build my church. Again, he was not talking about a physical building. He was not talking about Snohomish Community Church and the foundations and the roofs and the walls. He was talking about the people. He was talking about we being the church, that he will build us, that he will strengthen us and that we can live as his body on earth. It lets us, and hopefully we can recognize this, that his authority is over us, that if we are not following his authority, then we are not being the church. If we are not looking to the head to instruct us where to go or where to step or who to reach out to, if we're not keeping Christ as the focus, we are not acting as his church. We are his. We are Christ's. Everything that he has said uh, about the church has led us to knowing and recognizing that he is the lead. That we should always go for, to him for guidance. That we should always do our best to live like him and to search out to be built up by him. When we say we are the church, we are saying that we are Christ's. That we belong to him. And if we truly belong to him, we will look to him to build us up. Because he declared it so clearly in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church. I'm so excited for you guys to join us and for us to continue building our church as we move forward, as we get to meet together again. I do want to mention one more thing before we go is that this Wednesday, we are having a back to school bonfire here at the church. We're gonna separate it a little bit, middle school from six to 7 p.m. and high school from seven to 8 p.m. here in the parking lot at the church. If the burn ban is still in effect, don't worry, we have propane gas fireplaces that we will have out there. Uh, it's a time for us to come and fellowship as school is getting started again, maybe a little crazy. We want to meet together again and celebrate one last time before we jump in both feet to our midweek services starting on October 7th. Again, thanks for joining us today. Hey, I hope to see you guys this Wednesday. Bye.